Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 You know, worship is personal. Unless you have a personal relationship with God, you can't enter. You wouldn't know how to respond. But when it's personal, you're no longer in the room. It doesn't matter who's next to you. you all you know is that you're in his presence. She ba 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 ya. And your closet comes here. Your closet. <laughs> your closet time. Woo. You're waking up four o'clock in the morning time. You're meeting God lunchtime. Your intimate time with God in the space that you meet him, it comes here. It's personal. And you can't really do it until all the other gods fade away. Huh. To all the other gods, to all the other idols, to all the other things that you put in that same space with God is no longer there. And all you see is Elohim, most high God, sovereign God, supreme God, ruler over everything. And then you recognize in that moment that he's my present help in time of trouble. God with me, God now in the battle, God is there. Promise to never leave you nor forsake you. God is there to bring you out, to bring you over, to bring you through. Anybody I'm talking to this morning? Did you have an encounter last night, last week, this morning? Anybody had an encounter with God just lately? That if it had not been for God, when your back was up against the wall, anybody know what I'm talking about? When, when God had to turn it around, come on, turn it around. When God flipped some things for you, when it seemed like it was impossible, and then God all of a sudden shows up and bam. But you can't do it until all the other gods, let all the other gods fade away. May all the other Come on, till there, till there's only you. May all the others fade away. Say, Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your Come on, say, Jesus, take your place. Father, we thank you. We honor you. Can anybody just see him now? Just everything move, everything move, everything. Nothing else matters. Can't nobody fix it. Can't nobody change it. Can't nobody do it but God. Anybody's got a but God in their belly. Look like it was over, but God. Look like they had closed the case, but God. Looked like everything had come to an end, but God! Woo! Is this a believing house? Do we have believing believers? 
I say, do we have believing believers? Not just people who go to church. Not just people that say the name, but somebody say, I believe. I'm a believing believer. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. Lift up your hands. God, we bless you for this day. This is the day that you have made. <laughs> and I'm going to rejoice because I woke up this morning. I'm going to rejoice because I'm in my right mind. I'm going to rejoice because I had enough sense to get dressed and come to the house of God. I'm going to rejoice because the God who kept me yesterday is going to keep me today. I'm going to rejoice Woo! because every moment it gets sweeter and sweeter. It gets better and better with the Lord, and I shall be glad, and I shall be excited. Ooh, I bless you. I don't know what you have in store, but I know the one who's in it. And so, Father, we thank you for this day. We give you honor, glory, and praise, and we give you victory for such a great man of God. God, that you left in the earth because he's a part of a continuum. He's a part of a new era to announce what is next. He's a part of building, establishing, and birthing out something that is new in you. And so we thank you, Father God, that we are here to honor, to celebrate, to give you glory. And Father, to thank you for a general in the kingdom. To thank you for one of our gatekeepers in South Florida. Thank you for his commitment to hold it. Thank you for every person in this house, every person assigned to this mantle and this mandate. Thank you, God, Woo! that they didn't back up in any battle. Thank you that we continue to draw our weapons. We take our position, Father God, as warriors in the battle. And we thank you, Father, that there is a new sound, Father God, that's coming out of redeeming word. There is a new sound that is, Father, being raised up right now in this region. There is a new sound that is gathering leaders, five-fold ministers. People are coming from the north, south, east, and west because there's something you are stirring right about here. And so, Father, we just thank you that we've came here this morning just to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being faithful. We honor you and we bless you. We give you praise and all the glory belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can y'all put your hands together? No, y'all need to make some real, like, like, take the roof off, the, like praise him. sit down you can do whatever you want to do I'm just grateful to be here I want to jump into a few things <laughs> you know that song say my praise is a weapon y'all have no idea how praise tear down walls you have no idea that when the enemy comes at you one way sometimes you just need to go get a praise break you, you just need to say excuse me one moment I'm going in my phone booth come on anybody in here understand that when you get into the place where you can praise God. Everything in your life change, why? Because praise begin to cause you to ascend to a place. And you don't see things any longer from the earth. You see things from the heavenly. Oh, ask Superman, come on up in here. Superman said, don't let me get to a phone booth. You better watch out. Because if I get to a phone booth, I'm taking off the old and I'm putting on something new. Superman say, wait, watch, hold, don't get me to the point where you're going to push me into a place of praise. Don't you come at me like that, because when you come at me like that, I begin to praise God. And when I praise God, the blessings of God begin to fall in my life. When I praise God, woo! You look at me like that, you're going to make me throw a weapon in my praise. My praise is a weapon. Just praise God. Hey! 
Okay, Ma. Y'all give me. Give me, give me. I see it's getting ready to be crazy in here today. I already see. Y'all ain't playing with the devil today. Y'all like, don't mess with us. We got on our shirt that say only believe. Don't mess with us today. Do we have any believers in here? Hit your neighbor. You too quiet. I get nervous when you can't praise God. When the spirit of the Lord is in the house and the angels of the Lord is here and you sitting there looking like that and you sitting there, oh, y'all cut up, I saw you. Do you understand that your praise is breaking things right now? Woo! Anybody need the report to change? Just praise God up in here. Just open up a portal. Praise! Woo! Open up a portal. Hey! My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. Come on. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. Hey. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. What he's done for me when I think about Jesus. people sitting there looking at us like this and that's why nothing ain't happening in your life yet that's why you've not seen a breakthrough because just coming in the building ain't it God needs you to open up your mouth we're in a season where you're gonna have what you say and can I tell you this prophetically that when you can't see nothing you won't see nothing that's why when you bust through and pray that's why when you get up, you begin to ascend to a place. You begin to see things from another dimension. Come on, we left the first dimension, that's earth. Uh-uh. The earth is for the earthly. I say the earth. The first Adam understood that he had the ability, he was regulated to the earthly. But the last Adam came and give you he gave you supernatural access to come into a dimension that the earth had to follow what that sound said. And when you praise God, you're able to see beyond what is seen. You're able to put a praise, listen to this. Woo. You're 
were able to praise God because of what you saw him do in the heavenlies that has not even hit the earth. That's why your circumstances does not determine. Okay, I'm gonna sell them over here. That's why what you see is not what is seen. He said, call those things that are not. We have any Bible believing, kingdom speaking, prophetic rollers in this world. I, listen, that you can ascend to a place in the spirit and you can get a perspective of God that have not showed up in the place you needed to go. What, what am I saying, prophet? I'm saying this. Until you become spiritual, until you learn how to soar into a spiritual place, your circumstances will be the circle that you always stand in. But when you get an eye in the spirit, you can see what heaven is saying, and heaven has the ability to change the report in the earth. Anybody need something to change? I'm talking about here. I I'm talking about you need a breakthrough right now. You need God right, right now, right now. And it's so good because God is the God that's in now. Believe brings you to a now moment. I say believe brings you to a now moment. All of these words that we, we sometimes get excited about, like faith and love, it's all spiritual. And you can't really benefit from it fully until you renew your mind and the spirit. Because you'll just walk around saying, I believe. No, this is not like believing for your boyfriend to come to your house. This is not like believing for you to get the promotion on your job. This is not just to believe in your mind. This is when you get so radically into a place in God that you so believe, you're able to turn it now. That means mid-strength. That means I was caught up in the heavens. And when I was caught up in the heavens, I began to see something that I needed to help be the air traffic controller to bring it from the air into the now. Your praise begin to release this when you open up your mouth. It begins to now signal angels, like angels are all in this room right now. Your praise begin to draw angels to your chair. It, it doesn't matter what my neighbor's doing. It doesn't matter what the people over here are doing. Maybe they ain't there yet, but I promise you, if you can really open up your mouth and give God a praise, your praise is gonna loose everybody on your road. Every, every, I got enough praise in me to get everybody on my road delivered. I, I got enough praise in me to get everybody that's standing around me, anybody that's six feet around me, you gonna get your breakthrough because I don't care. Oh my God, my God. We not taking no prisoners. Everybody got to get free in here today. Now open up your mouth, grab somebody and say praise God with me. on your rope get somebody on your rope get your partner get you a partner come on one can put a fight a thousand two pastor cherry two if you can get two people all i need is a partner of agreement that's all i need i need and don't get with nobody who look like they scared who look like they say we're gonna come back and get you after we go are y'all ready? God is about to break some things free in this house. He's turning your mourning into laughter. Pastor Linda, he's turning the mourning. Redeeming word, Apostle Dad Ed Brinson. He's turning every morning. I hear the sound of laughter. I prophesied on the walls. I prophesied in the chairs. I prophesied in the brand new carpet. Out with the old, in with the new. 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 Now when I count the three, in with the new. You gonna praise yourself out of where you were. Can I tell y'all prophetically what is happening in the spirit? 
The prophets understand that we've come to the ending of What am I saying? I'm saying we've come to the end of an era. That means everything you've seen is no more. Every heartache, every disappointment, I need you to put them all in a bundle. Come on. We gonna bundle some things today. We, we gonna bundle and burn. We gonna bundle and burn. Y'all not, we not just burning. Oh, y'all not hearing? Everybody is a part of this. You burning old hell. You burning old lack. You burning old disappointment. Y'all not hearing me. You are burning bad relationships, disappointment. We came to burn some things today. Anybody ready to burn? He said, take it. The Bible says, he says, take it, bundle it up, and burn it. Now, I want you to take everything. You might have left home with some bad, some bad vibes. You may have come into the church and was disturbed. You may have had some folks in your space trying to mess with your frequency. We gonna cast out every tumor that have been sitting on the wall of prayer, sitting on your praise, won't let you go no higher. But I heard the Lord say we came to bundle and burn today. We gonna burn the old, we gonna burn the past, we gonna pe- burn failures, come on. We gonna burn, anybody, we gonna burn it. Every place of death, every place of lack, every place of grief, every place of sorrow, every place of disappointment, redeeming word, today is the day that we burn. Because there's an announcement coming to this house, and today I came to prophetically declare it, that it's a new day. Tell some Nate, it's a new day. Tell them, all things are passed away, apostle. Behold. All things. Anybody can see why I see all things. All things are new. All things are new. And what we do, we're able now because we can see the new. We're able now to stand in this now moment. We can call those things that are not. Why? Because they never stop being what God said. God declared something over this house when it was established. He made a prophetic promise that he will fulfill some things for you. Stay right here. Y'all with me? Stay right here. We in the huddle. Stay in here. We about to get our game on. We making nothing but touchdowns. We doing nothing but dunks today. Are y'all hearing me? You better get out of my way. I'm about to dunk it. I got some people on my road with me getting ready to give me an alley-oop. Because we champions up in here. Any champions? gonna dance on the devil head now listen listen to this this is good I feel the Holy Ghost I was so tired left Nashville last night couldn't get on the flight I got home about one something in the morning had to fly into Orlando get a um had to get a lift somebody to drive me because I had to be here this morning somebody to drive me all the way from Orlando I said I got I have an appointment to be at Redeeming Word. There's some things that can't happen until God brings certain mantles. Not only do we shed things down as prophets, we announce you into your next. So what prophets do, they bring a death certificate to what is old. (laughs) And they see what could see what could not be seen because they put you on their wings and say, now, can you ascend? Because if you can see what I see for redeeming word, you wouldn't be sitting in the chair looking around. If you're really connected to this vision, you will see that we're burning the old and we are building something brand new. I I say we're building something brand new. And all of you who have been a part and are called to be a part, what God is constructing in the now. So, so let me fix this. This has nothing to do with who left and who came. Y'all ain't hearing me. We put too much responsibility on people. God made a prophetic promise. 
and he don't go back on his word. When God decreed a thing, it shall surely happen. Are y'all hearing me? When he decreed a thing, it shall surely happen. And, 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 and so, so when you decree, de decree is something that's amazing. But this word believe is, y'all got to understand. This word believes, when you believe it, it comes from a word, another word that we look in the scripture. When we look at it, it comes from this word that gives us like command. He says, when you decree a thing, when you believe it and decree it, it's a military term. It gives you authority. It says, no, we're not asking. We're not begging. We're not pleading. We are decreeing. Things are burning. You should smell the fire right now. Get, get it lit. Get it lit. Get it lit. Get it. Your praise light. Get it lit. Get it lit. Get it lit. Get it lit. You should smell it. Because everything that is of my old life is about to be burnt away. Somebody say burn. Jesus burn. Say burn. Jesus burn. When he finished in this praise and you take off the old and put it in a place to praise, to burn, you're going to open up your mouth with a new document. <laughs> with a new constructed plan for your life. A new constructed plan for your family. A new constructed plan for the vision. A new constructed plan, y'all hearing me? For purpose, for identity, for the call of God that is on your life. You're going to open up your eyes and behold a new day. Because God is laying in your hands new blueprints. There is a new plan. And this is not just about what is just happening in one location. As we come into the body, God is already gone before us. We are in a new day, redeeming word. So we burn the old. And we come into the new. Anybody ready? Let's get the fire lit. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My shout is a weapon. My clap is a weapon. Hey, my clap is a weapon. Come on, let's get it ready. My praise is a weapon. Do some prophetic demonstration today. Come on, we're casting it off. Cast it off, 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 cast it off. Come on. I can't hear over my mind. Come on. Over my mind. Come on. Over my mind. Over my mind. Come on. Over my mind. A new mind over my mind. Y'all ready? In my heart. Come on. We cast it. In my heart. Letting every offense go. In my heart. Every place of hatred and unforgiveness. We cast it. It can't come into our neck. In my heart. Come on. In my heart. Y'all ready? Over my life. Over my life. Come on, y'all ready? We put it in, 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 we put it in. Say burn, 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 Wait, hold on, hold on. Did I tell y'all that in this season, every sound that is not synchronized to what heaven is saying and what heaven is doing, you're gonna miss out <laughs> what God is about to unlock in your life. Behold doors. 
but these doors are voice activated. The key is in your sound. I, I say the key is in your sound, why? Because, because when you start talking about frequencies, you start talking about the ability to get in a vibration and a vibe. When you come into the spirit, you begin to create a rhythm. And the enemy can't stop you because there's such a force. Why? Because we're in a season where the glory of God is getting on our sound. The Bible says we go from what? Faith and so every time you get a new reality of faith and belief, you are given access to another dimension of glory. That means when you begin to believe God for something and it manifests, you begin to now celebrate God for what you saw him do that bring a sound in your mouth that causes you to get access to the next dimension that you've not seen yet. Somebody say it's at the door. You are already at the door of your next. Y'all just don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. You know why you don't believe it? Because the devil has been wearing us out. He does, his job is to wear you out with so much problem, so much disappointment, so much aggravation that when it's time for you to step into your greatest moment of victory, you too tired. The Bible says that the water was stirring, the angels came down. And you would think that if the water was stirring for me to get my wholeness and my healing, and it was right there, I would have grabbed somebody's leg. I would have grabbed hold that to somebody who was going in that direction. I, I wouldn't sit here. He said, why ye sit here and die? Why are you so mad that when the Spirit of the Lord shows up to bring you victory, you so mad you can't even receive it? We are sitting in such offenses in this hour. Who offended you? Who told you that? God made a promise over your life. As a matter of fact, in the beginning, he was telling the devil while he was in the garden, he says, listen to me. He says, what you did to come against the woman. See, the devil shouldn't have came after the woman. He, he messed up when he came after her because he didn't understand. The Bible says she's the weaker vessel. He says, but what I'm going to do in this hour, Genesis 3 and 15, he's been telling me. He said, tell the church that I'm bringing strength. Say strength. Some of us tired from praising. But the water is stirring. The fire is burning. And the water is stirring. I say the fire is burning and the water is stirring. I say the fire is burning and the water. We in days of fires and floods. The fire is burning and the water is stirring, Sharon. But listen, when you come to those moments and you're in the hallway of life and you are stuck somewhere because the old mind is trying to keep you from moving, but the waters are stirring and they require movement. But before you can move into the water of refreshing, before you can move in the water of wholeness, before you can move in the water of divine healing, you got to burn some things off of your life. Because after the water, you come up out of the water. <laughs> the Bible says that baptism that was given through Christ Jesus, when they came, he said, this is There we go. When he came from up out of the waters, the Bible says the cleansing waters is fire and water right now. God is purifying and he's cleansing. And so if, if, if we can get all the old stuff off of us that is making us become bound, that is making us heavy, that is making us not understand who God is and what he said. If we can put it in the fire, burn it. You got to shake it off. The Bible says, Paul, he shook the snake off. He said, it's venom, shake it off. It's toxic, shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off. Every thought, shake it off. It's not good for you. But if you can shake it off when you get to the pool of the water, because it's stirring. 
when you take this dip and you come up, you're coming up brand new. Three people got it. You're coming up. I don't know, some of us don't want new. Some of us hear new and we get scared. Some of us hear new and we hear work. Some of us hear new. We get nervous. But you're coming up brand new. There is a brand new spirit that is in this house. Anybody smell new? Carpet new? Chairs new? Oh, y'all not hearing me. Can I just go with the Holy Ghost? Can I just, I just flow with the Holy Ghost? Y'all stay right here. We're going to get out of here, celebrate. I just came to bring some, something to you. And we're going to stay here and celebrate. But, but there's moments that we're dealing with prophetically, y'all, that God has said. That, that he's saying it's an ending of an era. That's why you're frustrated. Because we've already now entered into announcement of a new era. And you're trying to work old methods. Your prayer life got to change. The five prayers you prayed, them fa prayers you prayed when you got saved for 30 years ago, it's not going to be the code on your voice that's about to unlock what is next. God is downloading a new sound. And you can only get it, Apostle, that you've been sitting in the presence of God. God is identifying who is kingdom and who's not. Only the kingdom has been qualified to take on this battle. This battle is not for the weak nor the faint. In Genesis 3 and 13, I start, 3 and 15, I started to tell you, the Bible says that this woman, when, 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 when the devil came after the weaker vessel, he said, you should tell somebody he shouldn't have done it, shouldn't have done it, shouldn't have done it. He said, that, that, that is what I'm going to use. He said, it's going to be enmity, war, between your seed. <laughs> between thy seed and her seed, it's going to be war. It's going to be hostility. Every time we get together, it's going to be a battle. Every time you show up, it's going to be a problem. Now, now this is what get me, Pastor Chair. I, when the Lord gave me this revelation, he says that. He, he took me all the way back to when he talked about the first Adam and the last Adam. One, the first Adam was earthly. The second Adam was heavenly. And, and what the first, he, er, um, the first Adam could not extend you into, the, second, the last Adam came to fulfill it and complete it. Why? Because the whole thing about God was to give you spiritual dimensional access. The devil sowed a seed into our minds with the first man to bring him to a place of time and space. So that means that the thoughts that you think that God did not say, they will keep you stuck on the earth. But when you get the mind of God, Jesus came to give us now a renewed mind. He says you lost dominion and authority because the enemy recognized that the prophecy in Genesis 3 and 15 was that what comes out of her is going to bruise your head and it's going to bruise your heel. And because he got that word, Apostle Melissa, he gave that, it was a, say it was a promise. It was a prophetic promise that what comes out of her is going to bruise your head and bruise your heel. What is God saying prophetically to us in this hour? He's saying, I'm about to fulfill that word. He said, this word was locked up for an apostolic moment. It's when God was raising up apostolic warriors. He says, these apostolic warriors have prophetic scope, meaning that we don't just see it like it's seen. We see it like God said it. Anybody can see it like, see it like God said it. <laughs> And so when you see it like God said it, Jesus came along and he says, what I'm going to do is recover you back from where you fell. The enemy knows that in the reality of where he exists, he's doomed. Every dimension, every, every place he's tried to move and maneuver in, his outcome is the same. His outcome. It's called you lose. It's called you're doomed. It, 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 it call, it's called you over. But then Jesus comes now, the last Adam. And the Bible says that the first Adam, God breathed over him, Nephesh. He woke up, his soul. 
In other words, he gave you conscience. He gave you the ability to make decisions on the earth. And then he gave man, the first Adam, he gave him authority and dominion. That's what the Bible says. To rule where? And where else? Where? The Bible says over every creeping thing, everything that was crawling upon the earth. Listen to me. Just stay right here. He gave him... <laughs> He gave him dominion authority. If you had known that one seed thought from the devil was causing you to lose dominion authority, would you have listened to the enemy? Would you have rebuked him and told him to flee? If you think if, if Adam and Eve really knew who they were, somebody say identity. If they really knew who they were, when he brought the thought to give them a mind to contend against what God said, that brought sin and separation, they probably would have thought about that different. But the Bible said when he sowed the seed thought into him, and before he even gave them the thought, it says that he breathed. Now, the amazing thing about God's breath is that whatever God breathes on, it comes alive. It can be dead. Just let me breathe. It can, it, 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 it can be unconscious, but it, it, it can be like in the coffin, Apostle Bernard. It can be in the coffin, like they done nailed it and said that's it. He said, but just let me breathe. <laughs> like some of the things God have spoken over your life. You thought it was over. He says, but I'm about to breathe. <laughs> Anybody in the back can hear me? Can y'all just kind of... This word goes all the way back here. Uh-huh, we got warriors all the way back there. Y'all see them? We see y'all warriors back there, don't play. Somebody say overflow! Word goes all the way. But he breathed. Now this is what God began to share with me. He said, the first Adam when God breathed on him, it awakened him into consciousness, meaning he was able to make sound choices. Sometimes we are unable in the earth to maneuver. The promises over your life right now, you can't kind of figure it out because you need some new breath. God made promises that. He made promises. He's, a, he's about to fulfill. I say he's about to fulfill, woman of God, right there. Lift up your hand, right? He's about to fulfill promises he made. Don't you back up on it. Don't you let the devil take you out. Don't you let him get you weary. Don't you let, don't, I, hey, don't you let him. I don't care what he's saying. I don't care what it, the breath of God is about to bring it. Glory! Woo! I feel the glory of God. We about to lay hands up in here. Somebody say, and prophesy. Listen, let me finish this, this revelation. Are y'all with me? Come on in, come on in. Yes. And then... He said to me this, just messed me up. He said, now the first Adam was awakened into dealing with the matters of the earth. He had given him this type of authority over every creeping thing, every creature that was on the earth. As a matter of fact, the Bible says Adam named everything. So what are you saying? I'm saying that Adam sat in the same thought with God. Sin separates your conversation from God. You think you're playing. See, that's why you can't hear God. 
People say to me all the time, I, well, I'm trying to hear God. Why can't you hear God? He's a speaking spirit. You are a spirit being. What is blocking you from here? What tumor has gotten on your wall of faith? What has messed with your belief? Everything God said, he is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. The issue is weight. This is the issue. Wait. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Why can you be of good courage? Because I got a word. I got a seed. I got the mind of God that has promised to me that he will never leave me. Now you got to believe that. Circumstances don't mean God left you. Just because you're in a battle don't mean God is not with you. Sometimes you got to be in the battle and say, throw me a weapon. Y'all not hearing me. Oh, the angels of the Lord show up in your praise while you're in the place of having somebody in a battle right now. Get you a weapon. Draw a weapon out of praise. Draw a weapon. Why you can do it? Because you are kingdom nation. You wouldn't be alive if you were not qualified for this battle. You wouldn't even be here. You would have left the first round. You would have been gone. But God has entrusted a seed in you. And he swore and promised. He said, devil, Mr. Devil, Mr. Lucifer, Mr. Serpent, I got something coming out of her. <laughs> Tell somebody it's in your belly. Tell your neighbor it's right here. It's in your belly. That's why sometimes you got the groan. Ah! You'll give birth if you just. Ah! You got to get so mad that you begin to go in the place in the spirit. And you say, ah, I don't have a word, but I got a sound. My sound is going to unlock some things. My sound is going to destroy hell. My sound is going to make the devil back up off of my house. Back up off of my children. Back off of my ministry. Get off my vision. I got a word from the Lord. I got a seed word. It's right here in my belly. Woo! Do you know hallelujah can be a weapon? If you only got a thank you, Jesus, that's a weapon. See, I don't remember all the scripture. But I know somewhere in the word of God, it has made a promise. Anybody a promise? Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Okay, listen. God, help me. I feel the glory of God in this house today. Somebody say glory. God, we feel your glory. We feel your glory. Let the glory come down. What he did. <laughs> this is so good. You know when you're trying to marinate on it, Apostle, you just, wait a minute, I just want to marinate. It's so good. It's so good. It set me so free. Because you're going to need it. Because the things you see are gonna create scenarios that's gonna to lie to you. And if you don't remember the seed word in your belly, if you don't remember when you look at your children acting crazy, you can say, I got a word on it, honey. I, I, I got a, I got a word, y'all don't let me, ah! And, and when it gets just about right for the word to manifest, this is what God does. God sends some hell to your house. He says, I got the trouble the seed. I, I, it's been there for a long time. You, you forgot what I said. He said, but I send stuff to trouble. I, I, I send stuff to make the soil get disturbed because 
right about now it's time for that seed to be fulfilled and and you won't even know it's still there until a tsunami hits your life y'all not hearing me you, you won't know that there's something that God seeded in your life through the word until something really happened ask Jesus the first Adam could not fulfill the second half because he was bound to the earth he let what was spoken out of a lower sound a lower like like what you listening to you better turn off hot 105 it's messing with your frequency honey that when heaven speaks the registered sound of heaven he, he said come up hither and you don't have to wait till you put on the candles in the room and say okay well I can't fast this week and I can't really spend time with God this week because I got so much going on and you don't understand you know the way my ministry worked with Jesus is that I got to make sure that the children is gone my husband got to go on vacation the dog got to be put away everything got to be locked down in order for me to talk to God the Bible says come here baby the Bible says he walked with Adam in the cool of the day they were so close they had the same thought there was nothing that God thought that Adam did not think he named everything because he had the full mind of God to know the spirit that brought life for it to become what God said the spirit of a thing tell you what a thing is. We so confused because we're looking at people on the outside thinking they the church. Yeah. Okay, let me, I'm going to lay that right there. You think because people got on church clothes. You, you think because they show up early to serve and sit somebody in a chair and they're in the back. Y'all better hear me. You think those people back there don't love Jesus because they, y'all better hear me. We done got this thing mixed up. He says the spirit of a thing tells you what a thing is. And so we're watching people in this hour we're in so confusing identity in the church. Our children, not only are we no longer defining them by gender, they have left the human race. They are monkeys. They are, y'all, these spirits are flying in the earth. They are coming out of terrestrial places. What are you saying, apostle? Things that's in the undercurrents of the earth. There's a kingdom that rules beneath us. This ain't about you just coming to church. All of y'all, please hear me. Can y'all people right there looking at the, can y'all just look at me one minute? I want you to see it on my face. I want you to see the glory of God. We done got too used to looking at things on the screen. But I'm live and living. I can touch you right where I am. I can send a word to your life that will change it. If you just lock in and believe, grab hold to the word. Don't look at the lady with the ponytail to the side and she kind of cute. That don't matter. That can't get me a breakthrough, honey. I can't cash in none of this hair, none of this skin. Y'all better hear me. I can't cash in this jacket, Prada shoes, all that's nice, that's earthly. And sometimes we're so busy looking at the outside. The Bible says that they were made in the image and the likeness man was. Adam named men the representative of all mankind. That's what his name meant. He represented man that will rule on the earth. But Jesus had to come to give us the proper representation to rule in the heavens. He lost his dimensional position when they sinned. So they were stuck here to this dimension. There are dimensions. What you're living in, if you want to change it, get another view. I say if you want to change it, all you got to do is come up, get another view. Because from when you praise and when you can see from an elevated position in the spirit, your problem ain't your problem. Your circumstances are under your feet. Your children are delivered. Your marriage is being restored. If you can see it. So we got folks that are trying to copycat. 
They trying to put on other people's mantles, other people's jackets. They trying to steal and rob people's weapons. They trying to do things that they don't have legitimate authority. And what's gonna be important in this hour, can I tell you, is voice print. They told Peter when he was with them as the disciples, they said, you got to be. You sound just like. You done been with him so long that they don't know the difference between your sound and Jesus. Why? Because you was made to be in the earth not to operate for him, but as him. Jesus Christ recovered you back to original voice print. We left the sound of glory. We left the sound of the kingdom. We know how to do church. We just stopped knowing how to rule and reign and have dominion and have authority. And when man rebelled against God, everything rebelled against man. Because you lost your registered sound to hold everything into its Sound keep things in sequential order. Everything in the earth is numbered. That's why we can go into quantum understanding faith that if you had faith as small as a seed of a mustard, you can speak to mountains. You can speak to huge circumstances and situations. Why? Because at the speed of quantum, quantum is the smallest particle. That means they can take scientifically, they can take a quantum, a small particle, and out of that small particle, they see the same formula that's in the smallest particle needs to be reapplied to the biggest situation. They are building out of what they can research from a small, he said, but if you had faith in the smallest particle, what's in the mustard seed? It holds the same. Somebody say, only believe. So let me close this file. Jesus comes as the last Adam. Mess me up. Because the first Adam was regulated to the earth, he was just here on the earth doing what he did until the, the animals stopped listening to him because he lost the sound of God. Y'all with me? By the time Jesus comes along, he had to get a whole nother womb. Couldn't have come through um, uh, Eve. Her womb was contaminated. We can see that when they had a baby named Cain, that this baby had no genealogy back to God because the blood of the semen had already been contaminated. You better be careful who you lay with. You can be producing something that's coming out of contaminated blood. I just want you to sit in that for a moment. That, it's in the blood, it's in the blood, it's in the blood. Life is in the blood. And so, Jesus, not Jesus, God looked at what was happening with Cain and Abel. And he, this is the prophetic promise in Genesis 3 and 15 that said what comes out of her, that's gonna be hostility. Stay with me, hostility. If we have the same DNA, why are we hostile against each other? Y'all better hear. I'm gonna go right here. Y'all. They say, who's your daddy? Do we have the same daddy? Like, who's your daddy? Why are we hostile? Because the Bible says in Genesis 3, he made a promise that hostility can only come, it will come between two seeds. One that is of God and one that isn't. Sometimes when you're making war against your brothers and sisters, you've allowed a seed thought to get in you the same that got into the garden that begin to break the communication with God so you can't hear God no more. Stay right there with me, y'all. Whoever's playing, you, you keeping the heavens open. Stay right there. Because this is a prophetic word. And I need the right sound. So thank you. May God anoint you some more. May God give you what you really need. May God bless your house. May God bless what you put your hands to touch. May he make your hand like a surgeon. May he purify your gift that when you go into the heavens to open it on the behalf of the people of God, 
that there is no contamination in you, that you know you have been sterilized by the glory of God, that you can keep causing us to ascend into places that we can see and hear. And Father, we speak that over his life. We say, God, raise up minstrels in this house, pure and holy, separated unto you, that can go to a place now that only you have been given the ability, Father God, to take them. That they don't follow after any other pattern, they don't seek after any other deity or any other God, but that you are Lord of every one of their homes. And they sanctify their instruments knowing that the real instrument is on the inside. And they only can play what they hear that is of the Spirit. So Father, we thank you for an elevated sound of the kingdom that comes back, Father God, moving at the speed of glory to create miracles. Miracles. I decree that under the anointing and the glory of God, that kidneys get healed. Miracles in this house. I decree. Can you lift up your hands on the guitar right there? Can you just lift up your hands? Come on, we give reverence. Come on, we lift up our hands. Apostle Melissa, can you just decree a word over them real quick? I decree, decree and I declare another level, another level. Open his eyes, Father, to see what heaven is doing. And may he, may he become one with heaven as his hands touch the strings. Now, Father, that season is over. Now, as he touched the strings once more, a new sound, a new sound comes from heaven. New hands, brand new hands will touch the instruments. He will never play another note without hearing from heaven first and playing what he hears from heaven. I decree it and I declare it as an apostle of the Most High God in the mighty name of Yeshua. Soon as I heard you, I heard a sound. And see, it's already shifted because I'm going to talk about Jesus, the last Adam. He's holy. The atmosphere just shifted. He's holy. Holy God. Pure, righteous. When the last Adam came along, listen to this, y'all. He had to recover us, all of creation. Everything was bound to time and space. But we was made to rule and reign in a seated position of authority and dominance. I'm, I'm closing. And when Jesus came along, he had to find the right womb to plant this seed. It had to be a, a womb that was not contaminated. This little girl named Mary comes along and he says, that's the womb. She's clean. That means that her thoughts have not been defiled. That means that the enemy had not been able to touch the soil of her womb, to contaminate the soil that could not have the seed sown in it. So when Jesus comes along, they're saying, they're making an announcement. And the Bible says the last Adam, when he comes, y'all, Oh my God. He recognizes the Father that we don't just need breath now. We need blood. I say we need blood. Breath and blood. Spirit, life. Spirit, life. He gives us now blood. The blood that was contaminated through the first Adam Jesus Christ comes now to cleanse. He gives you blood because you're going to need now life-giving, sustaining ability to be able to rule and reign in the earth as Christ with his DNA. Adam did not have his DNA. He was a form. The Bible says that man was made in an image. An image means that it's a replica. It means that it looks like God, but it doesn't have his DNA. Okay, y'all with me? There are many people. There's some among us. They're aliens. Your response tell me you're not the seed of Christ. You roll your eyes still? Nah. You need to go get some seed out of you. 
You have to look at people and say, who contaminated you? Who made you stop believing? Who told you it wasn't possible for the dream God gave you to happen? He looked into God and he said to them, who? Who? How'd you get over here? How did y'all get out of place? How did you get yourself in a situation that you start believing what I did not say? But I come to tell you today that God is burning the old. The waters are stirring of the new. He's driving out knowledge of seed that has contaminated your purpose. And he said to the devil, he says, because you came after her, she was the weaker vessel. What comes out of the weak is going to be the strength that's going to, it's going to be a strength that comes out of the weak that's going to abolish hell. When he talks about the authority that he's given, he says, I'm giving you back your rule, dominion, and authority by the blood and the spirit. Not only do you have the ability to destroy hell, everything that comes out of your DNA that is in God, generationally, y'all not hearing me. I I'm telling you, everything that comes out of you that's in proper order with God has in it the same ability. It's the succession. It's the continuum. That's why he went and got disciples. He said, this doesn't stop with me. It continues with apostolic people. It continues with people who come into their real identity. It continues with people who know that I am their father and there is no other God but me. It continues with people, y'all hear me in the back? It continues with people. There's a holy nation. There is a royal priesthood. There is an apostolic prophetic breed, can I tell you, that God has put aside for now. Why? Because we're in the days of war. We're in the days of kingdom. We're in the days where you're going to need to be identified by the blood. You got to get bloody again. You got to get blood over your life. He says, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood. You need blood on it now. You need to get back to the altar. You need to get in the place that you pray until sweat comes out of you in blood. God wants to see blood. He says, I'm a bloody priest. I want to see blood on my people. When I see the blood, I know you're dead for real. When I see the blood, I know you let people go. When I see the blood, I know you're forgiven. When I see the blood, anybody hear what I'm, when I see the blood, what it costs you? Blood is sacrifice. Anybody sacrifice for the anointing? Anybody can say, honey, I bled for this. Anybody can, oh my, anybody can look at your life and say, you are the DNA of Christ. I see the blood on you. I see the anointing on you. I see the cost of your sacrifice. Your praise have shifted. Your hallelujah have changed. Your sound is anointed. I know the blood is on you. My God, oh, both say, I know the blood. Nothing but the blood. Not, we wash this place in the blood. We cleanse this place in the blood. We speak the blood over the altar. We put the blood on the instruments. We put the blood over the walls. We say the blood is in the lobby. We put the blood over every door. Death has already been overtaken, overruled. We cancel out. Woo! We cancel every witch. Every witch. We've got fire for you today. We, I, I say we got fire. I say we got fire for every Obi and Wom. Y'all not hearing me. Everybody that's enchanting. Everybody that done made a voice. To... It's crazy. Stay right here, baby. It's crazy to war against God. The only thing that wars against God is something that's not in God. That means you are listening to another speaking spirit. One who has lied to you and made you believe that you have power to come against the almighty God. This ain't just about breath no more. I got blood on it. You better back up when you see the blood. You better understand now where I'm going next. I got blood on it. I can't lose. I can't be defeated. The blood covers. The blood sets free. The blood makes hope. Warriors, stand to your feet. 
Your praise, it's got to cost you to unlock dimensions. Are we just going to stay in the earth having a nice song and a nice dance? And that's why some people's lives don't get broken free. You praying without power. The Bible says that the blood has power. It is the blood that holds the power. If there's no sacrifice on it, won't nobody be able to benefit out of it. We'll be doing works, but we'll never see the manifestation of heaven coming to the earth. Religion is over. We're not doing the same old, same old. And let me make this clear. Religion is not... Religion does not mean that we're not being holy. Religion does not mean that we're not being righteous. Religion does not mean that we're not sanctified. It has nothing to do with my jeans. It has nothing to do with my t-shirt. I'm telling you I'm a bloody priest. It has everything to do with the power and the authority and the dominion. Follow me and see the centurion soldiers say, there is something on this man named Jesus. There is a lot of people that's leading, but there is something different. Why can't you go down? Why can't you just disappear? Why can't you, ah, say, but there is something on your life that keep raising you up. It's resurrection power. It comes from the blood. You are a bloody priest. And God sees the blood of your sacrifice in your praise, in your prayer pressing, in your oil. God said, I see it and your sound came up before heaven. And there are angels that are signed to your command in the season. He says, you can tell one to go there and they're going. God said, you can tell another to go there and they're going. He says, but I have given angels. I have even now measured out to you thousands upon thousands and they are waiting for your command that you would rise up now as a bloody priest that you would rise up now to put things back in this prophetic order that you would rise up now in apostolic strength because when you are made weak it is when you are strong when you are in your weakest moment it's when the blood speaks when you are in your weakest hour when the devil think is over god say oh but what's coming out of this pride What's coming out of what I've ordained? What's coming out of his... Uh. Soon as you've been in the ring, you've been fighting, round seven. I, 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 I love it when you get to round seven. Stay right here, because we're closing. Round one. Round two, round three, you went down. The angels came and got you back up. When you was way over there in the other church, something hits you. Like, is this gonna be it? God said, no, I made a promise. That's not it, get back up. You got back up on round three. You got back in the ring, you got a victory on round four. And round five, you had the grace of God on your life. So you felt, Another win at five. When you got to six, six is the number of man. Six is when you start contending with flesh. Six. Eka Roma sikede baro tataya. Mashe karaba sokede ya. When you got in the ring and you was like on six, he was killing all flesh. This battle does not belong to you, but it belongs to the Lord. Everything was coming. Looked like it was trying to take your breath. But the devil forgot that you had a promise. He forgot that in Genesis 3 and 15, God told him what comes out of the bride. Everybody's not the bride of Christ. Can we just make that clear right now today? There are people that go to church, but then there's a bride that's a remnant. And it's strange about remnant people because no matter what you do to remnant people, you can cuss them out and they'll still praise God. They'll go get you some groceries. They'll pay all your buckle. 
They'll turn around and pay your bills. Don't mess with remnant people. They just go glory, oh my God, on you. They begin to go to dimensions and they begin to unlock vows. They come back with heaven's agenda. And while you are in the earth, the old man, come on, the identic nature that is still bound in sin, trying to come at me. I'm telling you, God begins to ascend me to a place because oops, there's the last Adam. Jesus comes. And when he went on the cross, <laughs> some things went to the cross. There's not enough people that have gotten on the cross. When you get on the cross, the flesh that was hung on a tree stays on the tree. But when you get on the cross, you that suffer with Christ will reign with Christ. And because you got on the cross, spread your arms open just like Jesus took the last nail and say, this is all I got left, but I'm gonna nail it to the cross. You took that last portion, nothing else. What can you take? You nailed it to the cross. And when you nailed it, you came back on round seven. Somebody say seven. Say seven is his victory round. Not only is he 70, if you really understood what the number seven meant, the devil thought you were out at round six. Flesh was sick, flesh was warring, flesh was defeated. God said, but I was killing it to leave it on the tree. He said, I was killing everything in your life. I was killing everything that would hinder. I was killing everything that would block. I was getting another yes out of your belly. God said, I wanted another sacrifice, son. I wanted to draw some fresh blood out of you because what is next, you're gonna need new blood. God said, I had to let the old drain out. I had to let it leave. You had to kiss people by. You had to cry, oh my God, I say, as they was leaving some of the earth. But God said, I was setting you up for seven rounds. He says, because when you got to the round seven, somebody say 70. Somebody say, that's the number of God. When you got to the seven, God said, this is where I step in. Oh my God, hand to hand, mouth to mouth, heart to heart. He says, I step in and my blood now, because you got on the cross with me, what's getting ready to take place next in round seven? God is about to move on your behalf. He said, just hang in here with me. Stay with me, son. I'm gonna show them in this hour of seven that I am God. Seven is the number of severing and separations. Seven is the number of divine rule and authority. It was seven angels that ruled around the earth. And God say, I want you to know in this hour that your rule is not just of this earth. So don't just look for people to have your back. Don't just look for people to stand with you. God said, I've already summoned angels. And angels have gone out speaking to new sons, talking to new daughters. They're coming from the north, they're coming from the east and the west. God said, I had to lay you down to recalibrate you. I had to bring everything out of you of the old. Somebody say glory. He said, I was laying you down. I was putting a new salve of anointing on your eyes. I was anointing your ears down the witches. He says, you're going to hear them before they even show up. He says, you're going to stop them. <laughs> oh, my shot. And their very acts of mischief and everything they have set for you. God said they shall fall in for themselves. God said, I'm raising you up and I'm gonna show them what resurrection power looked like. He says, when man counts you out, heaven was counting you in. He says, today I recognize you as the DNA. I come to tell you, sir, you are the seed. You are the DNA. You have the original voice and sound of God. He's been recalibrating you. He's been tuning you up. He's been getting you ready. And there is another prayer place coming out of your life. You will gather people around this state and they will pray. And people will come from the extension of states. And the Lord say, think it not strange. Your reach now will go over the border, says the Lord. He says, but I will cause you to raise up an army in this hour. And when you think you're at your weakest moment, and when you think you can't, and when you think it's over, he says, that's when I come up in you. That's when now the two become one. That's now when they see the Father, they see the Son. That's when you speak in the same frequency, the same rhythm, the same pattern. You're about to see things happen so quick. He says, you're going to think it and it's going to happen. Y'all not hearing me. You're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to have a thought and a conversation with God. And I can hear your thoughts saying, you think it's so that I can have somebody to do this and this can be done. There's crazy favor on your life at seven. 
you think you had favor. Somebody say crazy. Crazy favor. Once you lost, you're about to get a double return in. There's restitution. There's recovery. Oh my God. And there's recompense coming to your house. So the Lord say, get ready. It's not over. And he's gathering everything that has been lost back into your watch care. Back unto the place of order. God said, I had to shut it down to reboot it. God said, I had to shut some things down in your life to bring you back up with resurrection power. For sir, it's not over. Seven is the number of God. And I announce to you, I announce to redeeming word. I speak to the chairs, the carpet, the walls. I speak to every instrument. I speak to every worker, every leader, every person that is up under this vision, every person that sits up under this mantle. Who's ever watching me right now that has an assignment for what God is doing? This is not just about redeeming word. This is about a region. This is about what God assigned and put a house here that can create now a portal, a gate for the angelic host of angels can come down. And he looked for a man. He looked for somebody who he can trust with his DNA. Just like Jesus, that can become the first partaker, that can sit with Jesus and out of them, there are generations that's coming out of you. Your children, children's 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 children. Your children's 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 children are gonna rise up. Spiritual sons and daughters, natural sons and daughters, they are coming. They are showing up. For this is a new day. For this is a new hour. They will lay down one way and wake up another. The revelation of God is about to hit their house. The revelation of God is about to hit their spirit. They coming forth with a new sound. And I heard the Lord say, tell you, when they return, when they return, put the robe. Put the robe on them. When they return, you're getting ready to see what seed you are and who's your daddy. On the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. In that blood, it was love. Love is the only thing that houses the ability to conquer everything. It was love in the blood. Love that gives life. Love that covers sin. Love that recovers. Love that don't leave you where you are. Love that takes off of itself and put on you to make sure you're good. You're gonna have to get all the offense, all the seed that was sown from every place, from social media frequencies, from phone call airwaves, from people that gathered in the corner. I sniff you out every demon, every gossiping spirit, Everyone that gathered in the hallways, everybody that gathered and I, I'd sniff you out. Demons run in groups and they are sitting, gather in corners and they create a frequency of darkness. And they look to gather others to come along with them because the more dark you can get in a space, you can mess up the speed of light. But we come to drive out, don't we? 30 seconds, pray in the Holy Ghost. Every corner, every crevice, every conversation in the bathroom, everyone that's over next door, Father God, in the banquet room, everybody that gathered in the parking lot, we send the angels of the Lord. We say, worker angels come and shut down, dismantle, cut off, destroy the frequency. We come in this house in one sound. We come up under one command. We come up under oneness. Father, make them one. Put your hand on your, the shoulder of the person next to you. In the middle, come on, put it. Put your hand, put your hand on his shoulder. Put your hand, put your hand. Everybody hear me. If you're not doing it, you're out of order. Come over some man of God in the middle. Come over some right here. Come on, come on baby, come on. Don't leave no gap. All y'all right there, y'all hear him get in the middle. We don't leave no gap, no gap. Any room the devil comes in. We create one frequency. We burning and we building. I say we burning and we building. We are burning and we are building. Seven is the number of God. Seven is the number when the angels show up. 
and they begin to rule not just on the earth, they rule over the earth. They take their position. Archon angels show up. Seraphims, cherubims, archangels, they show up. Michael, Gabriel, we call on them today. They show up and they war on the behalf of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is something happening in Fort Lauderdale this morning. God is redeeming time. God is redeeming prayers. God is redeeming your sacrifice. God is redeeming your children. God is redeeming your money. God is redeeming your mind. I say redeeming word. The King of glory comes to redeem you today. This is your day of redemption. This is your day of recovery. This is your day of recompense. Now make a noise in this house. One sound, 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 one sound. Woo! We make war on the enemy casting down principalities standing firm come on get your wall in jesus victory hey here we go because we making war in the heavenlies taking down principalities standing firm in jesus victory Anybody got victory in here today? At the sound of your cry, at the sound of your war, I want everybody in this house that received the word of God, that understands we're in our seventh round. Seven, if he rise, we do. Our apostle is riding in a place where the favor of God is on him. If favor is on my apostle, it's on me. You just got to stay connected. You got to get in oneness. You got to stay in the rhythm. You got to stay in the sound. You can't break your sound. You can't break your rhythm. The same sound that drew favor to his house. If I sync myself with the sound, favor going to hit my house yet. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Favor coming next to my house. Why? Because I'm in the same sound. I carry the same frequency. That means that every member, every person, a part of this sound, when you go into prayer and you are one with Christ, and your headship is one with him, then when they hear you pray, they hear Jesus. Jesus has a sound that calls creation to release what has been held up. It has to come. Say, come now. Open up your mouth. Say, come. Say, things are coming to my house. Say, I burned the old, and I'm building what's new. Say, Father, I thank you for the new witty ideas. I thank you, Lord God, for the strategies. I thank you, Lord God, for financial wealth increase and harvest somebody say i thank you for healing my body i thank you for healing my mind somebody say my family is healed somebody say my children are delivered somebody say i'm rising up in authority and i take dominion say this is my day that god is showing up on my behalf and i declare i got victory I got victory. I got victory. Now open up your mouth and give him a victory praise. Thank you for victory in my house. Victory in my life. Victory over my children. The sound of victory in my money. Victory. Victory. Woo! Victory. 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 God's doing something. The glory of God is moving in here so fast. Get ready. The builder's anointing is upon you, apostle. For you should build things that you had on blueprints years ago that you kind of walked away. And you thought it wasn't going to happen. The Lord said in this season, give me a cloth. Is it up there? Get it for me. The Lord said in this season, He's building, not just for you. I hear the Holy Spirit say, tell him I'm building with him. Sharon, the Lord say he's not just building for him. He's building 
with you. Whatever you say, it shall be. Whatever you call it, it shall be. Whatever you want to see, that's what it shall be. God say your voice print has registered with his sound. And he's about to reward you. But not just reward you. The Lord is about to award you. Did y'all get that in the back? Do you know when God rewards him and awards him? Y'all ain't here. If he's awarding and rewarding my apostle, what's on the head? Here come your reward. Here come your award. Why? Because I've been standing with the man of God. I've been fighting with the man of God. I've been believing with the man of God. No matter what it looked like, I held my position. You are a part of the reward and the award. Redeeming word. Redeeming word nation. You are about to see the award and the reward of heaven. I announce it. I decree and declare it to be so. You're in a new day. Resuscitation breath. Priest of the Lord, the sacrifice that you have made has drew blood. And the blood is about to speak on your behalf. I say the blood is about to speak on your behalf. Now, I know y'all been doing a lot. I know we've been seeing a lot and God has been saying a lot. But here's my assignment as I close. I'm leaving. I'm finished. I think we got the announcement all the way in the back, right? Now, go tell the devil that. Get on social media and say, this is the new word. We are in a new day. Say, we have burned the old and we're building. Did they get it, Pastor Linda? We are doing what? And we're doing what? And what? We're doing what? And doing what? We burn the papers on this building. That means that if he debt free, I'm debt free. Y'all. I'm debt free. I'm pulling on everything out of you. See, people be playing. They don't know how I got to where I got. I don't just carry books and I don't just carry iPads and shoes. I carry the mantle. I'm not playing. I know the power that's in a mantle. I don't just play with folks. I respect mantles. I see authority. I recognize authority. The only reason why I can get the authority I have is because I've subject myself. I made myself. I call Apostle Ed. Dad, what is this? What is God? Let's get in here. Let's pray. He knows. We in this. We in this together, Dad. Give me your hand. Jesus people proclaim. We stand with you. Linda, we stand with you. Redeeming word, family. When the devil come after one of us, he come after all of us. We can't lose this gate. It's bigger than just your house. You got people in this whole region that's counting on you. Families, lives are in the balance. You got to get clean. You got to be holy. We got to come in oneness because we're guarding too much. And when you come in the realms of the spirit, demons don't care about your Gucci bags. They don't care about your Bentleys. They don't care about how big your house is. They don't care about your designer clothes. And they don't care if you have a dollar. Demons treat people the same. If you are a living, breathing human being, the devil hates humanity. You can say, well, I ain't got nothing. It doesn't matter. He don't want to stop till he see you leave the earth and go to hell. But God says, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Say it out your mouth. Say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say it again. Say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Shall not manifest. Shall not take rule. Shall not have position.